Christine Butler. And then for Rep Chair, we're going to ask you three questions. All candidates got the same three questions. And then you get questions for us. Ann Harris, yes, you speak. Ann Harris. Sorry. Yes, you do. Sorry. Tustin, Tustin, can everyone hear me? Yeah. One, two, three. Hello, good evening. It's a great to be here. It's so Good evening, I'm Christine Butler, Vice Chair and Acting Chairman of REC. It's uh, great to be here, see so many supporters out. I'd like to thank Brian for opening up uh, the restaurant and Karen and the clubs for hosting this event. Um, we were, uh, not very long ago, you elected me um, as Vice Chair without opposition. And I'd like to say that I, I thank you for your trust and confidence in me and my entire board. I'm back here again tonight to ask for your support and convince you that I'm the best um, candidate for your next bracket chairman. So to start out, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am an attorney and practicing corporate attorney and CPA in Broward County. I've lived here for 36 years. I'm a member of good standing of Florida Bar and the FICPA. I am a lifelong staunch Republican um, and um, come from a staunch Republican family. I worked my way through college and law school where I graduated cum laude and um, law review. Um, I believe I stand out from my candidates, fellow candidates, and my service, my past and present service for PREC. Um, over the last several election cycles, I've been very active, like many of you, at the grassroots level and contributing in local and state and in the national campaigns. I've worked at, at all levels, grassroots up and canvassing and calling and get out the votes and um, been advisory board, uh, on advisory board for a couple of uh, congressional candidates. Um, just some fundraising, hosted meet the rates, donated time, money, and, and efforts to, to getting people, Republicans elected. Um, currently, and my, my position now as vice chair, and most recently as the acting chairman, I've gotten very involved with um, the fundraising for Wolbrecht um, in terms of the upcoming um, Lincoln Day event and some other fundraising events, and I'll have more news about that in coming weeks. Um, we got very involved um, in a couple of, um, of the city elections yesterday, and I'm proud to say we, we did participate in the plantation, and congratulations to Jerry Fadge and his big win. I initiated a Second Amendment petition drive and voter registration drive. We did one of those at the you know, recent gun show. It was a huge success. We won four of those and other um, other petition drives and, and uh, voter registrations at events throughout Broward. Um, I've also been active in yeah. reaching out to community, other other clubs, um, RPOF and attending state uh, conferences in Tallahassee and Orlando, reach, meeting, reaching out to other rec and, and Republican leaders around the state. I think that's real important for Chairman to do. Um, so I, basically, I'd like to say that my, simply put, my vision for rec as I see it, is to really build on the tremendous successes that we've achieved over the last two years. And I'd like to take REC to the next level. Um, I think, you know, REC is the, could be the preeminent uh, executive committee in the state. We should be, we are large. We have so many opportunities to confront um, the challenges and offer solutions where we can lead the state and lead the nation. Um, and then finding you know, a lot of solutions to the challenges that are facing the Republican Party now. Um, my program would focus on three fundamental areas, and that would be um, electing Republicans, um, more tools, more resources, uh, smarter races, more technology, um, and more aggressive uh, voter drives. Uh, second, I 
um, focus more on more fundraising and a lot more, more events, and more fundraising all year long so that we have you know, campaign funds for uh, next year and we're ready to go. And third, I would um, focus on voter outreach and public voter education. And um, I have quite a few strategies on that, and, but I'll invite that for questions. Um, so with, with that, I open up to questions. Gonna, I'm going to ask four questions, and then the audience will ask a few questions. Okay, so the first question is, you hit on this a little bit, but what specific qualities do you have compared to the other three candidates that would make you the best chair of Brent? Well, I would point to my recent service. Of, as long as I've been involved in Brac, I think I hit, I hit the uh, deck running. I've gotten involved everywhere I could, everywhere I was needed, everywhere I was asked. Um, I'm kind of, I know it hasn't been a long time, but I'm in the position now. So I'm, you know, kind of baptism by fire. I'm, uh, I'm actually doing the functions of, of, of chairman. Um, I have, uh, I think, tremendous, um, uh, but I have I have good organizational skills. I'm good at leading and motivating by example. Um, I don't uh, need to be an ego uh, with the and take credit for getting anything done. I, I really believe in teamwork and you know mobilizing resources and, and the best use of resources. I, I think I'm much more strategic. What plans will you put into place to make sure that we do not have the election results we had in 2012? In the election, you mean the national election? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, we've got a lot to do in terms of voter outreach. Um, we need to do a better job of targeting the groups where we didn't do so well. We didn't do very well with with young women. Um, we have not reached out very well to other groups, Hispanics, African Americans. Um, I think um, that's going to be key. We're going to need to educate and offer an alternative to the narrative that the Democrats have given to all of these other groups because I believe that there are hidden Republicans in a lot of these people and that uh, we just need to explain that, and we can't let Democrats control the narrative. How would you raise money for BRAC operations and to support candidates? <laughs> well, I want to do more fundraisers. I don't want to rely on just one. I want to do the Lincoln Day, and uh, we had a very successful barbecue and some of those. I'd like to do more um, events. Um, I'd like to do speakers. Uh, bring in more speakers and um, and have uh, things where we can tie in fundraisers to themes, to speakers, maybe like something around the Second Amendment, have different things, maybe once every two months or every quarter, depending on the way we organize. Um, How would your board differ from past boards and what new positions might you add? Hmm. Well, I, I do know that we have a very, um, we've got a very close-knit board. Uh, we work effectively well. I mean, we've, we've had a few growing pains, but um, we are, um, we, we work very well. I think none of us have a super strong ego. We're, we're all basically there as, as team players. Um, what our ideas are, we would really like to structure some, some committees. There are a lot of people have indicated you know, strong interests and positions in areas, and uh, basically, you know, we have a vast amount of talent in our membership, and I would like to leverage that and, and organize that into committees. And um, yes, I, I am. If we're going to be top notch and professional, we are going to have to have an executive director, or two, so that that you know, I and the board can function not in ministerial things, but the big idea and the big vision and executing that. That would be my. I'm going to open it up to questions. Hold up the yellow card if you want to ask a question. Christine, I attended the um, gun show at the Wall Memorial Auditorium. <coughs> I was so proud to see you out there actually doing the work and gathering the signatures. Um, I, I, I had to drive away, actually. <laughs> 
I noticed that in the speech, when you said that you would lead by example, and I saw that very example. However, there are some in our membership that are so despondent because they work so hard, making phone calls, sending letters, standing on the corners, um, filling out envelopes, um, that I'm wondering if you have any specific ideas over and above the fact that you lead by example, which I think is excellent, by the way. I'm not diminishing that at all. Like, um, but ways that you would encourage them back into the world. Yeah, I do, and I have been talking. There are discouraged, disaffected, despondent people. Um, I, I, I talk to some, and then I suggest, you know what? Instead of griping and complaining, what is it that, you know, what is it really bugs you? What would you like to see? And let's talk about a committee and how we can bring you in. What would you, not everybody should be stuffing envelopes. Not everybody should be going door to door. Not everyone likes to do that. I don't like stuffing envelopes. I did it last night. But, you know, everyone has a talent. If people want to write a newsletter, if they want, if they have social media skills, if, uh, you know, um, want to help out with our, our um, website. There are lots of things. I, I do have a lot of ideas. Our board has a lot of ideas. And we need to modernize. And a lot of, I think, some of the things we're doing are sort of outdated. We, we do need to incorporate more technology, more tools, and um, that's, I've actually already had some people come in, assess our structure, assess what we have, and give us estimates and tell us, you know, how to get where we want to go. But well, we need some money. <clears throat> Hi, I uh, wanted to thank you for your service so far. I appreciate it and everything. And the uh, uh, question I had for you was uh, concerning, uh, we recently had elections in the city of Oakland Park as well as Plant Nation and other places. And uh, unfortunately, our two Republican candidates uh, did lose by just a handful of votes, maybe 80, 90 votes, things like that. I left a message at the office, at the rec office, a few days ago uh, asking for a return call, and I, I never got a call back. It, it was about you know, maybe doing robocalls for these folks or, you know, and, and when we had our last meeting a while back, uh, I remember I came up and spoke for, for, uh, uh, for Elaine Walls and for, uh, and for Stephen Art. Uh, they weren't able to make it in the last moment, so, but, but I didn't see a reach out to those candidates to ask what we could do or anything like that, and so now we have four liberals sitting on the city commission at the city of Oakland Park and one independent. And so, uh, you know, now it's kind of over for a little while. But what I wanted to ask was, if you get the position, and, and, you know, and, and continue, uh, how are we going to uh, really reach out for, when we find out these candidates are running in Broward County because we're the Broward Republican Executive Committee? So, any any city in Broward, how are we going to reach out to the to the active Republicans that are running and make and, and make sure that they get the resources, make sure they get the robo calls or whatever that we have to do to make, make sure that. In our cities, that, you know, that everybody's covered, you know, for this. That, that's a great question. That is exactly an issue that came up at the board, and we had it at our last um, uh, club president's meeting. Um, and I'm going to just tell you, you did say something in there that you, you called just this last week. One, we have to start earlier. We have to start weeks, months earlier. Um, and um, I think it'd probably be a good idea. We we did tell the club presidents at that meeting what resources we have available and how they can avail themselves and, and how they can, you know, yeah. But it would be a good idea probably to either put our website or have a, something that goes out to everyone, uh, candidates. First, we would need to identify them. We need a better way of doing that, I agree. So that we would know all the elections coming up, all of the candidates, and we would reach out to them and say, here are the resources that are available for threat. Let us know what you need. Um, we have robocalls, you know, um, Volunteers, tell us where, what you're going to need, and I mean, I, I did reach out to two or three, um, but I didn't, I didn't get, um, no one else contacted me. I'm sorry about that. That's kind of a call out of the interim. We don't have the phones manned right now in the interim period, 24/7, and even every day. So, um, but we can do better, and we will do better on that. If one of the other candidates should win a chairmanship, how would you and the board assimilate with them? 
Well, I don't expect no problem. I'm telling you, still in the same position. And we have some programs that are kind of already underway. Um, I don't see that as a problem. I mean, I'm big on team, team player and consensus. And you know, I would welcome if a new person comes in and they've got ideas, we would develop them. Hopefully, we'll work something out. But I mean, we do have ongoing programs, and we will incorporate. Whatever's new, whatever works, whatever is the best for Brett, we will do. So any one of the yeah. other candidates would not be a problem with any of the three of you. If no, we, I mean whoever becomes the Brett chair, if you're asking what any of us revolt to leave, no. <laughs> we can't hear no. oh, okay. I, I think she's asking would would there, what kind of repercussions there would be if there was another um, chairman other than me. Um, the board would be united in its purpose and commitment and ongoing programs and, and whatever we put together. No, we would not revolt. So we would all wait. <laughs> yes. Hello, Christine. How are you? Thanks for being here tonight. Thank everybody for being here. One second. It was Brit Scott. Yeah. Yeah. To what extent are you willing to work with the Tea Party? Very much. I'm a, you know, it's going to be cliche, but I'm all for inclusion and not being the party of exclusion. There are so many areas that we overlap. A lot of, and I think most of their issues are very similar to ours. Wherever we can agree on core Republican values, I think we want to bring people in and work together. Fair enough. Now, you, you just mentioned most of. What are some of the issues that the Tea Party does not agree with this? Yeah. Yeah. You got another card? Since we only have a one question limit, I would have posed this question to everyone but you, but since you're the acting chair, I will pose this. I'm a little bit perplexed to understand why our organization has a vice chairman who stepped up during a tumultuous time when no one else was willing to do so, stepped into the role, why we have to go through this and you're not the heir apparent to become chairman because you've stepped in and deserve that role. And as much as I like everyone else that's running, I believe that that is the purpose of a vice chair, that should the chairman not be able to fulfill their duties, that the chairman, the vice chairman steps in. Is that not part of our, uh, our organization? And if not, uh, would you support one of the others for vice chair should you get the chairmanship? Constitution that spells out that in the event of uh, several events that create a vacancy, that uh, the vice chair will hold an election in 60 days. But um, yeah. um, second part of that, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but I support, oh, yes. Um, yes, actually, yeah, actually, I have to talk about that. Hi, Christine. You talked about inclusion, but you submitted guidelines for this debate, tomorrow night's debate, which severely uh, limited freedom of speech and basically to keep the local media out of these debates. Uh, if you're afraid of some Republican questions, how are you going to take on Mitch Caesar and the rest of the Democrats uh, who are always hostile to us? And why would you be afraid of Republican questions? Actually, if I could clarify that, I, you know, forgive me for trying to be proactive. I heard you were happy to just get up rather quickly, and just so I was assuming everyone would have a level playing field, we would just sort of have some ground rules. Um, I didn't realize, you know, and I, and I should have known that, you know, Karen, of course, had it all handled. Um, but, um, so I just proffered those with a cover email saying, you know, here's some suggested rules based on other 
um, debates and forums that I have been involved in. And I merely put them out there to all the participants, the hosts, and said, I'd be happy to discuss these, whatever you guys think. It was a starting point. It was not anything to exclude the media or whatever. But it's kind of sad commentary that the ones who have been the harshest have been our own people. Our own, our own people. Yeah, one question. Anybody else? Any other questions? <laughs>